Um, let's go, Kyle Goon. Sorry, hey, Brian. Uh, oh. Kyle, oh. if you don't if you don't mind, one second. Uh, I didn't see Mike there, so Mike, go ahead. Hey, LeBron, uh, that final play or that final section of the game, Caruso sprints down the court and just wondering, you know, it seems like an effort play, but there has to be a certain amount of just mental acuity there uh, and just kind of recognition. Can you take us through what you saw in that from that perspective and, and kind of how big that was? Um, you know, I, any, anytime you have a turnover, you just want to have a quick twist, try to get back and uh, try to recover the play. And that's exactly what we did. So I'm with AC getting back and then all of us just kind of formed a wall. Um, you know, Dennis did a great job of um, standing in front of Kimba, even though Kimba got to his pad and his shot to step back. But Dennis still got a great look. I mean, uh, got a great contest on his shot and uh, ties him in layup. So we came away with a, with a win. Frank spoke about shortening the rotation to nine for tonight, and that's been uh, that's been something he's been juggling with. You know, you have 11 guys at least uh, who you'd like to give more minutes for. Just your experience over the years and, and what it's like having the rotation like that and how that impacts guys night in, night out. You know, I, as professionals, we all just have to stay ready when our number is called. You know, we're here for one reason, one reason only, and that's to try to win a championship, and that's what it is. Kyle Gunn? Hey, uh, AD talked a little bit about uh, sort of just not wanting to lose three in a row and then having a little extra energy from that. In what ways do you, do you feel like maybe that extra energy or extra desire to, to break the losing streak came out tonight in your guys' performance as a team? We don't want to lose one in a row, you know, and then we take our we take pride in losing two in a row. And uh, we did that and uh, and in Philly and Detroit. So uh, we knew we was coming to a hostile environment um, in a hostile building, understanding you know how good this team is. And we had to play uh, some really good basketball in order to win. And uh, we was able to, to, to win one possession more than they were tonight and come away with it. Yeah. Hey, LeBron. Um... You guys, obviously, every, every time you step on the court, um, you guys have a lot of talent that you put on the floor. But over the past year and, and 20 games, I guess, this season, um, playing harder than the other team, um, wanting it, I guess, more has is, is been a, a thing that that's really shown through. Um, how have you guys been able to, to can keep that, that, that sort of like we're going to play harder than you um, more nights than not sort of mentality? Because talent can only take you so far. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of talented teams in this league, but it's how far you can go as far as how hard you play, um, you know, how much you challenge yourself on the defensive end to try to get stops, to want to get stopped, um, and just have that mentality. So um, that's just how, that's just who we've been over the last uh, year or so. Bill? Hey, LeBron, that, that group you guys started the second and fourth with, with um, THT, Caruso, Trez, and, and Kuz, and yourself, isn't one we've seen a lot before. Uh, you had a lot of success with it tonight. What, what do you like about that group and, and why it was effective against what they were doing? It's a high energy group. Um, we all play with a, with a, with a, with a pace, uh, a level of energy, and we just fight off one another. Um, you know, and it's a team that can, uh, we have multiple ball handlers, multiple guys that can slash and, and shooting. Um, you know, so um, it works well for us. And, and Trez just demands, uh, you know, the paint. So um, it works extremely well for us. Oh, hi, Tower. I think you're on mute. Yeah. Hey, LeBron, if you forgive the the offbeat question a little bit, but uh, you're in you're in Boston right now, and next week is the Super Bowl. You gave a shout out to Tom Brady last week. Just um, congratulate him for making it back to another Super Bowl. Um, what's it do for you to see a guy like him playing at the level he is at his age and, and doing what he's doing at that high level, getting back to the pinnacle of his sport? Um. What does it do? Does, it doesn't do anything for me as far as what I do in my profession, but what it does, it lets me know and lets both of us know that we can still play this game at a high level, no matter how many miles, how many games, no matter how many doubters, no, no matter the statistics of, you know, in our respective uh, professions at our age, um, we can still dominate our sport. And, uh, and, and, and also we can bring together groups that we may have not been around for a long period of time. You know, it's just our professionalism, how we attack the sport, how we attack, the, the, you know, um, you know, every single day of being a professional, um, of wanting to win every single day um, in a practice, um, in, on the film, on the practice field, and on the, in the games, um, so on and so on. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we gravitate towards people and people gravitate towards us uh, because we have one common goal, and that's to win and win at the highest level. Last two questions, Joe Varden. Hey, man. Uh, 
What did you think uh, seeing Tristan in, in a different uniform tonight? Um, and then, uh, you know, when you play Boston, you know, that's, that's all you see. You see green. You, know, you don't really see uh, the person, you know, when you play Boston. So uh, it was no difference. Um, but it's always good to see my brother. Um, love him to death. Um, you know, I'm extremely proud of him. And the, the leader he's become, you know, he's like a now a vet for this team. And, you know, they're going to use his knowledge uh, you know, throughout the course of this season, both on and off the floor. So I'm happy for him. Last question, Melissa Rowland. Hey, LeBron, I have kind of an offbeat question for you as well tonight. Um, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about how your game has grown from when you were 18 to 36. How would you say your leadership has grown and evolved from when you were 18 until now? Uh, well, I mean, I think, I think uh, you continue to learn. Um, you know, at 18, uh, I was the leader of my high school basketball team uh, for four years, or well, let's say three years, along with a other couple a couple guys. Uh, but you know, you come into the professional league, you you sit there and watch, and you become a sponge, and you see, you know, you lead by example. You go out and you practice hard, and you try to stick your head into the film and just try to get better every single day, and just try to keep quiet because there's bets and things of that nature, and you got your coach staff who you know, does a lot of the talking. So. Um, I was just more of a sponge, you know, at 18, just, just watching, watching, seeing. Uh, but I've always had that leadership trait, you know, whenever um, it will become available to me and, and someone will come up to me and say, we need you to lead. So um, as the years went on and it just continues to build, it continues to grow, uh, you know, and I know um, who I am as a person, as a basketball player, and uh, I have a lot of knowledge to give to my teammates and, and to franchises that I've been a part of in my career. So. Um, you know, leadership is not, is not a not a one-day thing. It's not a one-trick pony. It's an everyday thing, both on and off the floor, and I take full responsibility there. Appreciate it. Thank you.